hello again. This is uh, number two. <laughs> so uh, I put number one up a few days ago now. It's had over 50 hits, so maybe maybe somebody's finding it useful. So uh, beginner's English concertina, number two. And as I said in number one, I'm making it up as I go along. It's not scripted, so you'll have to excuse mistakes and all, because I'm only doing them once and then, uh, then uploading them. Okay, so last time, I had a, another look at the video I made last time. A couple of things I'd like to clear up. I said on the other one that the English concertina had all of the, uh, the black notes and the white notes on the piano on each end. Um, that's pretty true, but I don't want you to uh, believe that you have the very deep notes on the piano and the very high notes that you have on the piano. What I meant to say was that you've got all the white notes and the black notes without any, any notes missing, without any gaps, okay? Um, obviously this won't go as low as the deep end of the piano and as the high end of the piano. Okay, I also mentioned English Anglo, uh, the difference between the two, um, but you might want to know why should you choose to learn English rather than Anglo? And I'll tell you why I chose, <coughs> excuse me, it's because it does have all those notes and that means that you can play in pretty much any key and the importance of that is, is if you are a singer and you want to play an accompaniment to your uh, singing then if um, you can play in any key then you can pitch the song to suit yourself whereas if you chose an Anglo concertina you would be restricted to the keys of the Anglo concertina, which in most cases would be G or D. Um, if you want to be able to play church music, then you'll need an English concertina, um, because often that'll be in a different key. Again, uh, it'll be in F or something like that. If you want to get into playing jazz or something like that, then again, you'll need an English concertina, because you need all those accidental notes and the opportunity to move from one key to another during the tune, which is what happens in jazz music. If, on the other hand, you love the Irish uh, folk tunes, and that's the kind of thing you want to get into, then an Anglo concertina pitched in G and D um, is most likely to be your best bet for starting. Okay? It won't give you the flexibility to play Christmas carols and Christmas hymns, not very easily, uh, you may be able to get a hymn out of it or a carol out of it, but the singers might complain that it's in the wrong pitch. The men might have, have to be singing very high or the women's very low to, uh, to sing in that particular key. So the English concertina is a good choice if you want to play in different keys uh, and if you want to play different styles of music. Um, there's one other point. Ah, yeah, I showed you my concertina. You might be surprised to see it's got wooden ends. Uh, is there a difference? <clears throat> well, the metal-ended instruments tend to have a brighter uh, sound and tend to cut very well in a pub session atmosphere. The wooden-ended instruments tend to have uh, a more mellow tone, I would suggest, and are probably better suited to song accompaniment. Um, it's personal taste, it's personal taste, but if you want, when I'm out in the pub with this, if I'm sat with uh, piano accordions and with melodeon players, I'm sorry, I've got a bit of a, <coughs> a bit of a chest, um, I can't hear myself. So if I had a, a metal-ended instrument, then it would cut through, I think, a little bit more easily. But they're not easy to come across good ones, and I, I'm happy with this, I'm happy with this. Okay, so <coughs> let's make a start. Let's actually do some playing. First thing you need to know is how to hold this. Now, a lot of players will push their thumb all the way through that thumb strap, way down to there. And in my opinion, that's going to restrict, it's going to place your fingers in the wrong position and it's going to restrict your uh, movement of your fingers across the buttons, okay? So, if I can show you, I personally believe a loose fit up to the first joint on the thumb there, you can hardly see the end of my thumb poking through there. And the little, if I crunch those fingers, uh, find the finger rest, there we go, little fingers down there, look, okay? 
And that gives me the opportunity to work my fingers all the way up those buttons without any strain, no chance of repetitive strain injury or anything like that. So very, very relaxed, loose hold. Same on the other end there, okay? And there we are. Okay, and I've got complete control and access with my fingers. So that's where I think you want your fingers, your thumb and your little finger on both ends. And then, if you watch some of the other videos, I'm afraid you'll see people playing the concertina with the bellows resting on their, their jeans, on, on the uh, fabric of the jeans. Nothing could be, nothing's going to wear the bellows away more quickly than resting them onto, onto fabric. So if you can see, I'm trying to demonstrate quite clearly here, I've got the wooden end of the concertina resting on my left leg, so that's a static end there. This end here is free to move through the air. damage to the bellows, a lot more control because this fixed left hand, left hand end here is fixed and so you can work against it with the bellows. When you're up in the air here, you haven't got a fixed point, doesn't matter, I mean if you, if, if you want to play like that, that's great, can get a bit on the heavy side. If you would like, um, the engineers can fit a couple of pins in here and you can wear a neck strap so that the thing hangs, so you do actually uh, have some support and you don't have to take the whole weight of the instrument on the little fingers and thumbs there Okay, but try and keep the bellows off of anything in my opinion. You'll see lots and lots of players who don't um, They don't seem to mind okay, but a, a new pair of new set of bellows what seven seven hundred pounds something like that so I'd, I'd uh, do that if I were you. I'm just looking at the time, making sure we're doing okay. Blimey, that's eight minutes gone already. Wow. Okay, let's play a scale. We're going to play up the centre two rows. The centre two rows. If I hold it there, ah, got it there. I'm trying to get the light off it. There we go. The centre two rows are the white notes on the piano. Those two rows up the centre there. On the outside are the black notes on the piano. So we want to play up the centre two rows, like this. You won't be able to get that low on yours. So that's there, there, whoops, there, 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 there. a scale of C that's playing up and down the centre two rows. Before next time, have a practice on that, okay? We're almost at the end of this video now, so I have to close. Walk your fingers, left end, right end, left end, right end, and it's a walking of those two fingers, those two fingers there. Walk them up, walk them down, and get used to playing nice and smoothly up and down that scale. And next time we'll have a tune. Okay, bye for now.